Well, I first started doing pulmonary uh, embolectomies um, for essentially due to the fact there's a need in our hospital. Uh, it's a community hospital, and to transfer someone out sometimes can take, you know, quite a bit of time. So I wanted to be able to do this within our own hospital, provide the service in our hospital, and thus is why I first started doing pulmonary embolectomies um, using endovascular methods. Um, a friend of mine who was actually at the Boston VA, uh, Dr. Gupta, had said to me, hey, how are you doing, what are you doing down in Rockville? And I had mentioned that I was doing this, and he said he thought it would be important that I actually put it out there because he said a lot of the people in the community might be a little bit wary about doing this type of procedure because they feel it should only be done at a university or a tertiary care setting. First of all, um, more so than a study, the logistics of it had to be worked out to be able to do this in a community setting. There was education that needed to be done with the emergency room, the ICU doctors, the hospitalist doctors, and then um, ultimately for both the diagnosis, uh, referral, and post care. So that first needed to be set up. Then once that was in place, um, it was very easy to a, you know, have the calls come in, do the procedure, record the data on the patient, and then just follow them uh, out from their procedure. So I found that we had treated you know, these 12 patients in a community setting for massive and submassive pulmonary embolus, um, seven massive, five, sorry, seven massive, five um, submassive. And we found that with a very respectable uh, mortality rate of 9%, so one patient, uh, we were able to do this safety effectively and with good results and good outcomes for the patients. I don't think it's common. I don't know that there's a huge number of people doing in the community uh, hospital setting. At least in our area, I do know that I'm one of the few that do it in a community hospital. Um, nationally, I don't know the numbers per se, but I would think that it's not a huge number of people who do this. So my study, I just wanted to basically give the information on both the logistical aspects of uh, performing these procedures in a community setting, uh, the technical aspects of the procedure, and to hopefully give some of the practitioners in the community who may be underserved in the sense of pulmonary embolus treatment to be, give them the tools and some of the knowledge to go ahead and provide that service for their hospital. So first and foremost, don't get excited about doing the actual procedure. Make sure the logistics behind taking good care of the patient uh, before and after the procedure, which ultimately is going to affect your results and your outcomes more so than the actual technique. The technique is actually fairly straightforward if you ask anyone who does any number of these. Uh, after you know a brief learning curve of maybe you know five patients or so, you become very comfortable navigating the anatomy. So the technique is not where the trick to this is. It's your actual involvement of the other systems in the hospital that take care of these types of patients.